nestled in the vibrant heart of San Francisco, where the city's bustling rhythm finds its soul in nature's tender embrace, always a room where culture and serenity bloom together. Today, on Piano End, we usher you into the enchanting haven of flower piano. Imagine this: a convoy of pianos, the timeless epitomes of musical elegance. Place upon nature's bountiful canvas. It's a whimsical blend, yet flower piano makes it a charming reality. Delve into the untold stories of how the creators of flower piano navigated unpredictable weather and the playful curiosity of young minds. Explore the deep impact this imaginative venture has had on the community. Reigniting a love for music and crafting magical moments. Join us on a melodious journey in flower piano as we uncover the tales of inspiration, celebrate the unity of community, and dance to the rhythm of nature. Each note inviting you to a world where music pans the air with enchantment. Piano and Park. Where the melody of culture and nature takes center stage. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Piano and series by Avia Learn. Today is Piano and Culture, and our topic is Park. So I know Piano and Park usually sounds like、hmm, they are not are they together, like get along together. But yes, we do. So I'm so honored to be able to invite the founders of Sunset Piano,、uh, Muro and Mr. Muro and Mr. Dean. Hello, welcome, guys. The... <laughs> Hi. Yeah, and、um, they do have the collaboration with the San Francisco Botanical Garden, and then it calls Flower Piano. So our conversation will be around that project. And I hope this is not like an interview. Like、oh, I give you questions and you give me answers. It's more like a conversation, just between、uh, individuals. <laughs> yeah. So so try to good. get we're, a, we're good get at get talking.、It. Okay, good.、Uh, I am okay with talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> a little social awkward, awkward, but I'm trying my best. All right. So always comes with a question. So、um, can you? Tell me about a little bit about your background and why you decided to, I guess, like do the sound,、uh, have the sunset piano. And I also see some documentary that you put twelve pianos on, like in this project, and then have the collaboration. Basically, your journey, like how how did that happen? You know, we started in two thousand thirteen by taking a piano by the bluff here in the in Half Moon Bay, where I have a studio, and.、Uh, That brought a lot of people around, and and after that we did an installation of twelve from pianos on the San Mateo coast. So we look in the ocean,、mm-hmm. and、uh, Dean, which is also a filmmaker besides a musician and working the flower piano,、um, did a a documentary of it, and eventually they invite us to do this in San Francisco. So we moved to San Francisco. In 2015, 16, and we were working mostly in the Mid Market Corridor, the Tenderloin area, and we were a bit kind of tired of being so downtown, and、uh, we wanted to do something in the Golden Gate Park. You could take it from there. Yeah, so we、uh, we've been looking at how different people, especially in Europe, have been bringing pianos into parks and. Train stations and airports, and this was start starting to be a trend, and we、um, we thought, well, why not in San Francisco? This is kind of a world class city. This is the kind of place where you'd expect this kind of thing to happen. So we、um, we contacted Rec and Park, and at first we told them we wanted to hide twelve pianos in Golden Gate Park, and what did they think of that idea? And they they kind of didn't like that idea too much, but they、uh, they said, hey, the, the botanical gardens. Celebrating its seventy fifth anniversary, and they may want to do something, and so they called them in, and they were surprisingly receptive to the idea.、Wow. Um, so, starting in two thousand fifteen, we put twelve pianos into the botanical garden,、mm-hmm. and、um, part of the time, and the idea was that part of the time the pianos would be open to the public to play, and part of the time we'd program them with musicians that we knew. 
Um, and since then, it's just grown um, exponentially. Yeah. So eighth year, we stopped once during the pandemic, one year, and then uh, this is our eighth year. Mm, okay. I heard because I heard of it. And also I, I saw you, uh, Mauro is also like in the in the program as well, like this year, this coming year. Yeah. Right. Well, and then I remember last year because we I'm right now I'm in San Jose. Before uh, before this year, I was in East Coast. Yeah. And then after I uh, work on work uh, in this company and then after a year, I decided to move. But I heard of flower pianos all the time last year already because that's it's supposed to be the first year like after the pandemic. Yeah. Like, and then I was I was here for a summer, but I couldn't like, to help our piano camp, but I couldn't like stay longer. So I'm even attending this year because I we have actually have some like arranging start arranging our students to you know perform when the when like it's not the concert times. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I've been heard yeah. I haven't heard about this for a, a while, and then my coworker also have performed there as well. So like she said, hey, why why not? Like this is a good topic, and then it fits my series this time as well. So my, my our series uh, last in the last um, part like of, uh, before summer it was for chamber music, like piano and four hands, piano and cello, and I was like, yeah, well, piano and culture then, and then so I started interviewing people from like uh, piano and airport, piano and yeah. So like I like you said, you said uh, you start noticing there are many people like start putting pianos in Europe, like public transportation. So yeah, I, I also got <laughs> the, the idea from that and then to try to see how this project will go. So thank you very much for sharing your experience. And then now I, I want to shift our conversation to like, um, I'm, I'm sure like there are so many challenges, like you, you just mentioned that like they didn't think that's a good idea, like originally, and then they contact you. Uh, connect you with the botanical garden. So, is there any like remarkable challenges um, in your uh, journey when you try to do this? Moving project? pianos there is a job. <laughs> we don't do. It. We have a moving company, but it's quite involved. And then during the festival, you know, pianos are supposed to be indoors, and by having them outdoors, if it's too sunny, they go out of tune. We got to mm -hmm. go around and put umbrellas and move them during the day. We had to make sure that the garden doesn't put the sprinklers on and get the pianos wet. Uh, we just... had to make sure the kids don't go and bang the pianos with their fist. And so there are a lot of challenges, but we have a couple of tuners and technicians and helpers. And uh, it's been going fairly well. We, I think we lost any pianos in all these years. Kind of. A Mo couple of times, yeah. Moisture is a big issue. Yeah. And so being in the Bay Area... Um, you know, fog can really affect a piano very badly. Yeah. Um, what happens is, you know, a piano is all wood and felt inside and there's very mm -hmm. small tolerances. So when it's damp out, um, those felt parts, especially, and some wood parts too, will expand slightly. And then mm -hmm. piano keys get stuck. You, you, yeah. they, you push one down and that's it. It stays down there. Yeah. There's not much you can do about it until it <laughs> yeah. dries out. So we have these different ways of um, keeping the pianos reasonably dry inside. Um, we've developed some techniques to do that, and that that's helped out a lot. Wow! Yeah, because yeah, I learned a little piano technique technology before, but still, like I cannot imagine how hard it will be. Like when you put the piano outside, and then like the piano has to suffer all of the weather changes. And yes, you're right, the, the kids. Like they are always curious and they might have a fun well, time. You know, we're doing it in September now, but for six years we did it in July, which oh. is extremely foggy in, in San Francisco. So that was even more challenging. Now we do it in September, which is sunnier. However, last year, for the first time since 1968, it rained in September. So we had to have tents with size in every piano installed at midnight. That was a crazy time. So, but we did uh, survive. So there's always something. Every year is a bit different. What we do is pretty crazy. There's yeah. like no, <laughs> there's no instruction book for it. And so we're kind of like solving problems as we go. Well, just like a yeah. startup. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Kind of, yeah. 
Yeah, it's because it's quite amazing that I I know like San Francisco is a big city, and then uh, but still like I don't know. I I always feel like it's a little bit compared to some other cities. It's like it's full of creativity, but music seems a little bit like not as strong as like other fields i would say like every time everyone like when we mention bay area surprised, though. and then people just me, think about technical stuff and then we, we have, know a lot yeah. of musicians the the problem isn't the lack of musicians the problem is the lack of venues mm -hmm. and and in the last you know because of the pandemic you know san francisco kind of got a one-two punch between the pandemic and and the whole tech thing mm -hmm. um for some reason, clubs and you know all the all the best places to see music in San Francisco in recent years have have closed or they're in trouble, yeah. and that's been a real shame. And so San Francisco used to be an incredible music town. Um, we're bringing it back, but we're trying. We're doing our part to 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 try to make it better. Yeah, thank um, you so much. So we're hoping we're hoping that if there's a resurgence and you know San Francisco's always been a boom and bust kind of place and um we're we're trying to keep you know the cultural aspects of this great city going. Yeah, especially yeah, yes. like we we I had an earlier conversation with uh, different people and then we all talk about that like um it's classical music or even like jazz to the younger generations they think that's you know, old people doing that, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit, it's challenging for for us. <laughs> like I, as a performer, I feel that a lot too. Like it's not not even here, like in my own country in Taiwan. Like I start noticing that uh, the kids that they have the less uh, appreciation to music. Like they don't, they have no idea like how music like yeah, no, impact they, our they life. Yeah. So, so thank yeah. you very much for having this project. I, I was I was happy, very like excited to see, like to know about Follow Piano. And when I get to know, like definitely I, I did some research on your website and I was like, wait, this is really, really cool. Yeah. And then as uh, I know we kind of revolve our conversation into the piano right now, but I'm also curious about the film part. So like how, I could, I guess I, this is not my area, but I'm still curious how you like manage all of that or um, how you, like what's your approach to this project, uh, Mr. Ding? You mean as far as filming it? Or? Yeah, filming it, like when you're trying to document it. Just... Um, well, the, the documentary that we did, um, you know, when we started doing this, it was, you know, I, I started up a Kickstarter Starter, and part of the money went toward the project and part of the money went toward filming the project. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know what was going to happen. I just knew that it was a weird and interesting enough thing that it was worth filming. And then after we got it going for a while and I started amassing all this footage, I realized, oh no, this is actually a good subject for a documentary. I can actually make a documentary out of this. Mm -hmm. So and then it, you know, it evolved from there and it took a long time to edit it. It went through a lot of changes. Um, I've made films before. This this one took the longest uh, because it kept evolving as I was making the film. And um, and then eventually we, you know, it ended up on Amazon for a while. It's on other platforms now. You can see it on Apple Music, Apple Plus and um and some other ones. If you go to 12pianos.com, you can see the different places where it's screening yeah. online. Um, so yeah, distribution, I didn't really put a lot of energy into it, but it got a little bit of distribution, which was good. Um, now I'm not really uh, working on any particular project around this, except that we, um, we've we got a um, a new thing that, we're, that we've been doing. We premiered it last year. It was a um, a project called Fall and Fly, where we commissioned a local composer named Benjamin Gribble to write this incredible piece of music for 12 pianos to be performed live on 12 grand pianos. Mm -hmm. And the, the director of the Stanford Symphony, uh, Paul Phillips, conducted it. And it was an incredible thing. And I did film that. I did make a, a small film about that. 
Um, and we're going to be performing that again at in Grace Cathedral in February. That's going to be something that your viewers may want to check out. Um, and we'll have more information. Yeah. yeah, we'll have more information on that as it as it um, as we get closer to February on our Sunset Piano website. Sounds good. I will. I will. Like, I can put a link in our like uh, YouTube channel, so like you, they can ha have the easier right. access to that. Yeah. I guess this will be the final question for both of you. So I know, like, as a performer, we always like to see when people hear our playing and then like smile and all that. And I just want wondering, what's the? Do you have any remarkable uh, experience with audience when like when you interact with them or? Uh, what's the most enjoyed part i will say like besides like doing crazy things i know like i like the adventures uh five but yeah there's a uh, you know, often uh things. one of the nicest thing is, is is sometimes a person that will come and say i used to play piano i don't play anymore and then they come the following year and say hey, i was here last year i went back to take classes i'm studying again or i'm playing again that's actually a great feedback but well, sometimes it happened with we parents with the young kids, uh, four or five, and they, they, they're they really excited to be there, and then they go take classes. And some more times there are kids that are amazing players, so seven or eight, it's like, whoa. They sit at the piano, and that's just like, my God, they're so good. To the point that we think that we might happen in the next year or two to have like a mini flower piano, flower piano for young kids uh, oh, schedule. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. There's now so I'm my students like, again. <laughs> Yeah, then you want to add another thing on that, but that's kind of. I mean, lots of magical things happen at Flower Piano. Um, my one of my most incredible magical moments was when uh, we were watching this 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 one. She's a friend of ours, and she's an incredible pianist, and she's getting more and more famous now, playing with symphony orchestras all over the world. Her name is Serene. And she um, she was playing in this area in the botanical garden called the Redwood Grove. And she was playing some Chopin. And she would like go up the keyboard, like up toward the top. And this bird was like fly through the whole area, through the between the audience and her. And every yeah, time she did. played these high, these high parts of the piece, the bird would swoop in and sing. Oh, wow. uh, and the and the audience, everybody noticed it. Everybody was like, "Wow, did you see that?" And it was this incredible, you know, like we talk a lot about the connection between music and nature when we talk about flower piano. Yeah. And this was it happening, like right in right in front of us, where this bird was was participating in the whole event. It was wow, it was pretty so incredible. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm having like yeah. a chill right now. I was like, wow, that's great. Yeah, like I cannot imagine I'm that. Come to Flower Piano this yeah. year. It's happening in September 8th to the 12th. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, I, uh, I, I got an email. It's San Francisco residents. Mm -hmm. And it's not for those that don't go to San Francisco. <laughs> yes, yeah, you can get, you can, if you're... If you're not a San Francisco resident, you can um, you can get tickets in advance mm -hmm. uh, through the, the San Francisco Botanical Garden website. Or you can just show up, but uh, it's recommended you get tickets in advance because the lines are pretty long, especially on the weekend. Thank you for the insights and the experience and then um, the information for the flower piano. Well, I guess we need to close our conversation. Before we close our conversation, thank you all for watching and thank you um, all the, the audience who is listening to. And also thank you, Mr. Morrow and Mr. Uh, Dean for uh, your time and your generosity to share your experience. So if you guys want to stay tuned for more interviews with other like fantastic individuals, please subscribe to our Yuko Club channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.